Where we are, the middle of Imbul slash Kettleworth, yep. somewhere out in the bush. I don't know where we are. The clay has turned this iridescent red. Yeah, it has. There is no traction. Nah. And we're stuck on the side of this mountain. We're about to winch a truck up. The one thing I love about this, mate, more I walk on this, the taller I get. Because the clay sticks <laughs> yeah, to the bottom of my shoes. Boots. Fantastic. Mate, this is hard enough to walk on. Yep. We decided we'd go for a little night run. We'll yes, be we back do. ready for dinner about six. Six ish. Yep. What's the time, mate? Uh, nine. Nine o'clock. And, and uh, we're not done yet. We've got miles to go yet. So, folks, we say it all the time. And I think it's very good advice. Advice you really should heed. Grab yourself something cold in a can, crack it, sit back down in your favourite chair, and check out Imble. Four wheel drive action style. Rolling your sleeves up, mate, and going right in. You really should. All right, let's get him up. You ready? So right soon. Right I'll go up here. As we wind our way into the deep forests of Imbul, it's hard to believe this place is just a few hours drive out of Brisbane. But let me tell you, this place is a hidden gem for tough four wheel driving, and these hills are full to the brim with steep climbs and some of the slipperiest clay to be found anywhere. It'll come as no surprise that the boys are pretty excited as we approach the tracks. We're starting our adventure by taking a local's favourite south of Kenilworth, a challenging track that'll be perfect for shaking down the Forbies. And speaking of, it's time to air down. Sean is running his usual weapon of choice, Sooty, a rear locked 80 series sitting on a four inch lift and 35s. Should be almost enough to make up for your driving, mate. Just joking. Rocket, of course, is behind the wheel of his auto converted 79, and it's an absolute track monster. Leading the dual cabs is my Isuzu D Max, which I reckon is going to give the big rigs a run for their money on these tracks. Shane is wheeling a Hilux Ute, which like the D-Max is running quality off-road fulcrum suspension, perfect for these conditions. Rounding out the convoy is Anthony and his Ford Ranger. Anthony is going to be camping in comfort thanks to an Opus OP4 dual fold camper. It's complete with Airbeam technology, a real revolution in camper trailer design. Yeah, good is it mate, back in Kenilworth. You, I've been here before when we came here last time and I remember I said to you so many times I just fell in love with this part of the world, really did enjoy it. Yeah, I've got to agree mate, there's just so much variety in here. Just real fun tracks and um, some red clay and the water crossings, it makes for good fun forward driving. Be pretty tough if they'd had a bit of rain, wouldn't you say? <laughs> we've had we've had a lot of rain, so I dare say we're going to have our work cut out. Mate, lead on. Hang on mate, hang on. Just around the bend is our first challenge of the day. Got a little clay rut up here. Now, it does look kind of washed out and a little bit extreme, but I'm gonna jump in the rut and give it a go. Sean's taken a punt on trying to ride the rut to the end, but there's a big step up on the right tire track. Could be a problem. And yep, it's just eating that tire. That's a no-go. Nah, not a chance, boys. That, that rut is quite steep, mate, and you go down on your side a little bit too far. There's a more sensible line sort of to the left. This mud is just so slippery, and Shono has to give it a fair bit of right boot to get Sooty out of the rut. Up ahead is one monstrous bog hole. Now, we've tested the depth and reckon it should be okay, but being first in the convoy is always risky. So Sean's taken no chances, and he's got his Dominator winch out and ready. If I do get stuck right in the middle of that dirty bog hole, someone will be able to grab this. I'll be able to have the controls in the cab. You have to get out slightly quicker than when it's fully sunk, and then you go, oh, heck, where's the recovery gear? So I've got recovery gear that's attached to your footwell. This is ready to go. I'm ready to go. Give it a go. Whoa, water inside. <laughs> have a go. Mate, there was quite a lot of water in that one, but a firm base. It um, came up over the bonnet, that's for sure, and came in a little gap of window and wet my pants. It looks like I was a lot more scared than I needed to be. All right, Rocket's next. The 79 is seriously heavy, so getting out of the rut in the left-hand line is going to take some effort. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Rocket's got the wheels up, but look at that. That is what you call slippery. I'm going to be really careful here, because I'm about to slip in the edge here. Oh, Rocket, you make me nervous. I'm right there behind you. <laughs> He's going to give it another go. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's just inches from falling into the rut. Straight, mate. Nicely done, boys. Alrighty, it's time for the D-Max. And I'd like to say, I'm totally confident. First track of the day. Slippery. 
Oh yeah, I can see. And come across here like this. Keep going, keep going. To me, to me. Yeah. <laughs> Getting worse for every vehicle. I thought I was going in there then. So did I. Woohoo! Damn, boy. Whoa, I've done it again. It's a chocolate milkshake out. <laughs> that's where chocolate milkshakes come from. Yes, that's a win for the D-Max. Too easy. Shane, you're up, mate. The left line is getting worse with each vehicle, so Shane is going to have to give it the berries to get out of that rut. Whoa! <laughs> Holy Ew! heck! I did a little wee! <laughs> did that scare you? I've been shot! <laughs> did I get you there, mate? Well, I'm going to kettle worth. We're running pretty low pressures here, and Shane's popped a bead on the way through. It's quite slippery, this sort of terrain, so the vehicle will just slide around. But we should just be able to jack that up, and it doesn't look too bad at all. With the compressor, we'll just get that straight back on the wheel. And um, it'll be right. Anthony's up next, and with that left line getting worse by the minute, he's in for a serious challenge. Get into it, mate. You're going to have to give this some berries. Wheels up, but ah, those ruts just put a little too deep. Winch, That's bad luck, mate. I thought you had that. Get it right. Yeah, take it out. Take it off. With the winch in position, we've soon got the Ranger out of the rut, and Anthony then brings the camper out under his own steam. That'll do us. Like Shane, the camper has also rolled a bead off the wheel, but fortunately the Opus comes equipped with a spare. So it's just a matter of moments before we're back on the road. With the first challenge of the day done, we push deeper into the forest. not long before the next obstacle is up in front. Now, there's been plenty of rain in the last few days and the bog holes, well, they're looking nasty. There's water coming in, that's good, that's a good sign. Sean's making this one look pretty easy. He navigates his way through these ruts with a minimum of fuss. That's a good drive, mate. That's slippery. <laughs> this place has got some of the slipperiest mud anywhere in Australia, I reckon. We've got a struggle here. The big girl's a bit... She's a lot longer than Sean, eh? Yeah. Have to watch out for these trees. There's not an awful lot of steering here. It's more of falling in a... That 79 is a heck of a vehicle to navigate between these trees, but... Rocket's got a lot of experience behind the wheel and has it lined up for the exit. Now, Rocket has a secret technique for dealing with situations like this. It starts with some careful manoeuvring and ends with, well, I'll let you see for yourself. Woohoo! Hold on for your life, Ash. Oh, will you look at that? He's not holding back. <laughs> oh, <it's ugly. laughs> Just, we must have done that the hard way, all the way. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what we did. Well, that's like a Disney car, don't accept that. Is not a drunken hippo. That right there is one madman rocket in the 79. I don't know how he does it, but it ain't for me. Watch how I negotiate this gracefully with skill and panache. Ah, these ruts are deep. I'll throw this first bit, which is... Oh, that's pretty gross. I'll <laughs> throw that bit with a bit of aggression. I'll try and stay over here. Good plan. Yes, better line, much better line. 
Would you look at that? The D-Max has just sailed through this section and with a bit of left hand down, I've managed to avoid that rut and get it through. Too easy. Shane's now seen how it's done and pretty easily gets the Hilux between the trees and lined up for the exit. That's good wheeling, bud. Alrighty, time for the camper. Anthony's got a pretty long footprint, but that camper is designed for these exact conditions, and I've got a feeling he might just surprise us. And would you look at that? Like I said, he's made it through. That's a heck of a drive. Well done. Hey, mate. I wanted to test that trailer. Well, they're doing it. They're testing it. <laughs> they're testing all testing all me a bit too, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared. Mate, <laughs> it's, just, it's just hardcore for a trailer around here. It really here. is. If they can make it through this unscathed, and we open it up tonight, there's no mud, no dust, no critters from the water in there. <laughs> done well. She's done real done well. well. But uh, this is not the end of it yet, so yeah. I'm you not going to say Did you put the eggs in his kitchen? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I hope they're there in one piece, no, mate. No, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. <laughs> All right, we should push on. On these steep hills, it goes without saying you really want to put a lot of faith in your brakes. And that goes doubly if you're yeah, towing that's the a way, camper mate. trailer. Get a load of that control. You can see here, Anthony is relying heavily on the trailer brakes, which is a great little tip for any four-wheel driver, especially if you're taking trailers in steep terrains like this. Now, the trailer brakes will take a lot of the pressure off the vehicle's brakes and really make it a smooth, controlled motion down there. So what that prevents is the trailer trying to overtake the vehicle on a hill like this. You're doing well, mate, doing well. Manual mode is a really good tip as well to use when you're going down steep trains like this. So when Anthony's driving, He's actually only using the trailer brakes when he's on these steep sort of hills. Now, I've got a Tow Pro Elite in my 80 series here. In fact, I've got them in all my four-wheel drives, and to be honest, I wouldn't come on terrain like this with a trailer without one. With the day getting on, it's time to head out to our next destination. It's a spot that I reckon will give you another reason to put Imbel on your four-wheel drive bucket list. Hey, Rocket, you got a copy, mate? Oh, yeah, bud. Mate, epic little track. Kenilworth fails to disappoint again, mate. Oh, I tell you what, I get all excited coming to this place and I'm having a blast today, absolutely. Good to see, Graham. You changed the, the paint colour, mate, of the D-Max. Not really, it's kind of red on red, mate. I kind of like it, two-tone. Yeah, Shane, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, mate. Mate, I saw you giving that uh, Super Pro Hilux a red-hot go. Oh, mate, really got to try to test out the suspension in all terrains, yeah? Yeah, exactly right, mate. Well, it was easily keeping up, so it's got a bit of height about it. What has it got, about a two-inch lift? Yeah, mate, two-inch lift all around. Yeah, it's working well out here, mate. Well, the good news is the tracks only get harder from now on. Bring it on, mate. Well, what do you reckon, um, boys? Get to camp, it's getting that sort of time of day where you wouldn't mind cracking a cold one and um, jumping in the rooftop tent. Uh, how long is it going to take you to set that camper up there, Anthony? Do you need a bit or what? I reckon I can set this up faster than you can set your swag up, mate. I, I, I'd put a beer on it. Yeah, I've seen it before, mate. I'm only joking. I don't doubt it. You push a bloody button and sit down and have a beer. It's cheating. <laughs> don't hate me. All right, mate. You lead, I'll follow. Yep, sounds like a plan. This magic little spot is Kenilworth Camping. It's actually a working dairy farm with a riverside camping section just minutes from the tracks. As the sun goes down, we roll into camp with the thought of a few iron jacks on our mind and of course, Shawno's cooking. How good is it? Everyone jumps into setting up camp and soon enough we've got swags, rooftop tents and of course that self-inflating camper are up and ready for action. So I'm enough for a few cold ones before dinner. What's on the menu, Shono? So here we are down at Kenilworth Camping. What a place this is. Now I've got to make special mention of this place because we've been here before, we're back again and that's not by coincidence. This place really is a hidden gem of southeast Queensland. So I probably need a, a meal that's going to be, I don't know, somewhat symbolic of the tracks we're driving. I'm thinking something a bit sloppy, uh, maybe a bit red in colour like the mud out here on the tracks. I'm thinking maybe a stew. Good old stew, you can't go wrong with stew. I've got a fair bit of ingredients here. We'll get this straight into the old baduri and um, I don't think we'll be on here. So I've got to find the ingredients first. Chop back. I need, um, we've got some meat don't we? You got some beef? Have I got beef? beef? I think you've got Do. some. Do. Have a go at this. What else have you got in here? Okay. Oh, I don't get a chance to have it. Good have a look in there. Help yourself man. You don't have what I'm looking for though. Well there, there's that. Yeah there's I that. need that, I need that. You're going to need a lot of that. I'm going to need... Um, <coughs> you doing steaks on the barbie? Or some carrots but that's not the, the main ingredient. I'm going to go on the barbecue. I'm gonna grab. Um, That's not for the barbecue. No, I'm cooking a, cooking a stew up. A bit of a stew. And um, I'm gonna have a quick iron jack as well, mate. You're doing a stew? A stew? No, oh, nah, man. Why? 
Well, you can't cook stew for love nor money. Oh, you're trying. You can't okay, cook yeah, stew. Right, it's right, a, it's right. a simple. You can cook. I like your cooking. I do. Right, but right, you right. can't cook stew. I've got to come clean here. Look, what Graham's talking about is the time I tried to cook a stew last time, it absolutely tried. failed. Tried. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, only failed on. because I was fishing. I haven't been fishing in Savo. So, this is true. And I'm not going to fish tonight. So, chances are I'm not going to forget about it. Okay. So, let's call it redemption stew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to redeem myself here. Mate, you I'm, have got. You have got a huge thing to redeem. Well, the last one was probably, I'm not going to exaggerate, the single worst thing I've ever eaten in my life. Wasn't good, was it? It was not fit for dogs. Dogs <laughs> wouldn't have eaten it. My dog, I wouldn't have well, fed it to my dogs. Tonight, though, I'm, I'm, I'm amped. Okay. I've, I've got this sorted. Okay. Look, this, look, this is one of the great things about this particular stew, is it really is easy to do. That sure be. That's mine. Yeah, exactly right, because I got it out of my Dometic. And, um, yeah, that's cool. And it's my bit. Well, you got one in your own. Hey? This might be a first as yeah, well. I, yeah, I'm the good, The first man. time I cooked a good on. stew and the first time he's, he's got a beer out of his own fridge. This is going to be quite quick. But basically what you want to do is just cut all your ingredients up and you don't need to go, you don't need to go crazy yeah. with your cutting. Nah, you nah, don't. nah. You found one. Cheers, bud. Yeah, yeah. yeah I had one left. Oh, lucky, I thought I didn't have any at all. Oh, that would have sucked. Oh, I would have, yeah. I would have, would have. Cheers, yeah. bud, too. Oh, cheers, yeah. mate. Cheers. cheers. Good on you. Good, good. Nice one. Redemption stew. Yeah, look, oh, I'm a big fan of redemption stew. Check this out. Yep, cut the onion, put them straight in. That's what you do. Yeah, I've got this. Put the quarters in. Okay, carrots. Yep. Now you're going to be thinking, oh yeah, you got to cut the carrots up and stuff like that. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to cut them up that much. Okay. Rip, Top and tail. Yeah, rip the ends off. Yep. And just go in half. Oh shit, whoa. was that on your finger? <laughs> oh jeez, no, yeah. it's not. You gotta be so careful, you're just going mate. in there like that? Exactly, just, just in half, just cutting these ones up. Where yeah. is this, man? A couple more, rip a couple more in. What else you got here, mate? Righto, bit of potato. Potatoes. Potato action. Potatoes. Damn, boy. Rump cab is actually, nah, it's actually very pretty affordable. Cheap. Yep. And best bang we have had good steak you can buy. If I if I quartered this up, this would feed eight people. Yep. They'd be like four dollars a steak. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And, and it's one of the better steaks you'll ever eat. Absolutely. So rump cap, folks, we're talking no, rump. No, don't tell them that because the price of rump no, cap no, will go no, up. Go up. <laughs> rump cap. Yeah. Go to your butcher and don't ask for rump. But you get the old rump, rump cap. cap. Which is the end bit. That, that... Speaking of which. Yeah, get in there. So what I'm doing here, I'm actually going to fair old bits. And the reason I'm doing big bits as well, because I'm going to have this on the cooker for a fair bit. Yep. So if you cook small bits of meat in like a stew, I, I find that the flavour doesn't permeate and infuse enough. I learned that in chef school, it's a, it's a real thing. Show the folks that, show the folks that. If you're, making, if you're making steaks, well, you wouldn't cut them like that, but- No, you, you wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty how you're going. So, it's got a bit of fat on them. They, these are quite large pieces, but the whole idea is I'm gonna get this on the boil for a little bit. Yep. Rip a bit of stock in there. This is uh, this is real stock, beef. Beef, beef stock. Beef stock, you can chuck that in. Oh. All right. Got a bit of the old Worcestershire sauce. Who, <laughs> what is it? Worcestershire. Yep. Worcestershire. Uh, yep. You, you come from the northern part of bloody... I don't, but yeah. That's about, that's about two tablespoons. Can't you don't want a... three table... Yeah, four three. tablespoons. <laughs> you want to chuck in? Diced tomatoes. R yeah, Rip boy. those straight in. I'm actually lucky. Ooh. I had those... I've been, look at this one. This one has been in the back of Sooty yeah, for, for a long time. Is that still... It's is that still night. Tonight's her night. That's, well, everyone gets... Every dog gets their day, mate. Gonna rip. There this one go. here, this is, a se this is a secret. This is... If there was one on, little wait, bit... That's not lychees, is it? Gravox, ground onion gravox. So you just you whip that in. All right, it looks like the mud out here in Imble. Let me tell you, nice red and sloppy. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna whack in a bit of brown onion gravy. I'm thinking yep. like about four tablespoons as well. Don't you need to put that in water first? I don't yeah, know, well, chef. There is I'm water not... in there, mate. Isn't okay, it? okay. Stock. Sorry, chef. Right, so that's a bit of gravox. We'll yep. whack... There's a fair bit in there. I'm, I'm whacking a fair bit in there. That's 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 you on purpose. Two whack a fair bit. Yep. In there. <laughs> One squeeze of the old tomato paste. One, two. Yep. That'll do. Lock that in, and um, we're looking good, mate. We're looking good. Yeah, I'm feeling good. Okay, now, oh, that's right. Got the old shovel here. We'll give it, a, give it a bit of a digger up. Oh, damn, boy. See, so it starts to yeah, that's, together. That looks, that looks fantastic. It looks so good, doesn't it? Imagine ripping your laughing gear around that. Can I light this thing up yet? Do you want to do expensive? Yeah, get that, on the, get that on the go. Oh. How do you do it? Yep. Yeah. So, look at that. That's looking good. I did Whoa. notice as well, there's some squirrel yeah, passes here. that came out of my truck. I oh, know, I saw that. It's you... open. How long's that been in your truck for though, mate? Uh, when did we do Arnhem Land? <laughs> <laughs> no, can what you put it in 90? there? What was it? Put it in there. Not now though. Not now. Oh, because it'll I'll come back because we're talking about two hours. That's why chef. We're talking yep. two hours. So I reckon if we um, we'll get that on the board. Do you want a lid? Yeah, put a lid on. I can come and check it probably <laughs> every half hour and just give it a 
Yep. Just fold it over. That's what they're saying, Chef's cool. Like you just fold the. No, fold that's actually it. that's baking. Well, same. Get that on. The, get that on the boil. Yep. When, if it starts to boil, we're going to turn that heat right down. I'm going to leave it for about two hours. Three will be better. If you got into camp at four, yep. in the Arvo, yep. you whack this one on. Seven or eight o'clock at night. I'm talking a long cook. A couple of iron jacks down near the fire. Come yes. back, and um, this will be bang. <laughs> Bang. Be a long night, Redemption folks. stew, I'm back. It better I'm be. Back. Redemption I'm stew, yeah, it better be I'm good. Confident. I'm real confident. All right, all right, that let's leave good. that then. That looks good. All right. One hour later. How about we, uh, how about we go yeah, for a little bit of pasta? Yeah, oh, man, man. Man. Settle down, mate. Damn, boy. The beauty is that pasta is old as arm land. <laughs> so, it'll work well. Work it in. Here we go. Lovely. What do you reckon, another hour? Yeah, give it another hour. Two beers. Two, two times two beers. Yeah. One hour later. Ooh, ah, here we go. It's been about two hours on the old boil, this one. Holy heck. Have a go. We've got a, we got, we got a flare up. Got a, I saw a smoke signal. We've <laughs> <laughs> got a flare up here, mate. What do you got? I just want to see. I think she's ready, mate. She alright? I think she's alright. It's probably going to be pretty warm. It will be hot. Do you mind if I do? Oh, mate, that's my spoon. Remember that time in Arnhem Land? Yeah. And I made that stew and I went fishing. I forgot about the Remember stew. Remember it? The little black little coals in the bottom of the yes, pan. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that is nothing like that time in Arnhem Land. This is proper redemption stew. Yeah, yeah, Wait. yeah. <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? Oh, my. It's not bad. It's actually, sure it's actually no. really good. This Holy is, this heck, is how it should have been back then, but I. That's like a, that's a reduction. There's a, yeah, there's the it's taste all happened. Of... It's all happened. The, and wait till you take this so I can tell the meat is just going to oh, fall apart. Man, I know that'll that be chunks, mate, but... Utterly ridiculous. Call the boys in. Yep. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> get on, get in. Get in here! I'm going to start serving her up, eh? Oh, I see you got Drink. a good ladle. Yeah, got, yeah, I got, got, the old ca- got the old camp cut. All right, you got a bowl? Camp we cut. Get your, oh, you got a bowl. Look at I you. Got a bowl. The I'm biggest ready. bowl. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Give Rocket some. Don't hold out on him. There we go. <laughs> yes! Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. The boys are bringing bigger bowls. Like, I know, I know, I know. What do you reckon, boys? Like, mm. is the meat? Look at those little chunks. Oh, chunks seriously. Mm. Mm. How good is that, eh? Oh, that is. For a stew that you pretty much cut things in big pieces. Yep. Set it, forget it. Have a couple of iron jacks by the fire. That is. But more than that, I think I've got to be the one to mm. say, I was on the opposite end of your last stew attempt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tonight, yeah. Tonight. You've redeemed yourself. <laughs> redemption this stew. is the redemption <laughs> stew. Thank you, folks. You, you've really, you've done it. You've done it. You've yeah, absolutely nailed that, it. That's not bad at all. And well, I'll let you, I'll let you do another one. I reckon. Mm. Pull up a little pew beside the fire. Well, that fire's going good too. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll uh, do that. Rocket. There's fire. plenty. There's plenty. Of, there's heaps left as well. That's actually pretty good. Well, that'll so be we'll good. For, that'll be seconds. good for lunch tomorrow. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Lunch tomorrow. That's yeah. really good, man. That's oh. You know, we get to camp in some pretty amazing places around the country. But i got to say, this has to be amongst the best. What do you reckon? It's pretty good, right? We've only just scratched the surface of the tracks on offer in this part of the world, but already the Forbies are showing the signs of some fun times in the mud, and the crew seem like they need resting up for another big day. Lucky for us though, Anthony is up and about and has fired up the Opus Camp Kitchen with a hot brekkie on the go. The smell of bacon and eggs soon draws the rest of the boys in. Smell that. Oh, How's it cooking? Pancakes and bacon. Damn, boy. Cornerstone of any successful cool. day. Yeah, yeah, luxurious there. to be able to get up, <laughs> wander into here in the morning, have a coffee. Oh. It's dewy out there and everything's wet. All the awnings are wet. You had to pop in here in the morning. This is a bit how you go. And have a personal chef. Oh, well, this yeah. is good. Oh, I could get yeah. used to this style of camera. Oh, I really could. That. I really could. Yeah. This awning is a way to rock and roll as well. Yeah, I couldn't believe that cricket sets up. That's well, still got me mystified how cricket well, You can't up. even really use the word setup because the boys. Plugged it in and walked off and had a beer. Came yeah, back that morning, yeah, so yeah. it's cheap. It really is. Mm. What have you got planned today? Well, more of the same sort of stuff. Tough tracks. Uh, you know what it's like out here, mate. That red clay sort of stuff. Real, real tough tracks. Find yeah, as many yeah, years yeah. you've got and um, use all your RPMs yeah, so and all the powers. Six enemy low range. All right, I should get up. Yeah, just, just. Camper trailer. Uh, you could take it, but um, I was even going to suggest you might even keep that here today. Oh, to be I was thinking the same thing. Why don't we leave it here? We've got, got, we got base camp. Yeah. And yeah. we can yeah. leave stuff out and all the rest of it. Because that's a good thing about this area, yep. is all the tracks are very close to Kenilworth Camping. So. The other beauty is if we get back late tonight, this is already set up. Yeah. Come back in, grab dinner. Yeah. Easy. All right. Easy. Well, that's cool. Right 
Hurry right, up and get breakfast ready. Yeah, just um, poach these for me, mate. Don't go crazy. Yeah, yeah, poach yeah, this yeah, morning, yeah. yeah, I'll go. I'll Scramble go. Scramble for me, then. Freshly squeezed orange juice if you could as well. I wouldn't mind that. Tomato juice for me, please. Yeah, with little hints of Tabasco and chili. With some brekkie on board, it's a quick job to unhook the camper and lock her up before we head back into the hills, safe in the knowledge that base camp is set up and ready for the evening. Little do we know though, it's gonna be a very long time till we make it back. On today's menu is a stack of tracks that branch out through the forests of Imble. Let me tell you, these bad boys are about as steep as they come. That looks freaking steep. It's a little bit slippery, but um, there's plenty of traction, not too bad. If you get a load of that hill, super steep, super shaly. Absolutely love the tracks around Kenilworth, Imble and Amamore. And the cool thing is, the three different state forests sort of all back onto each other. So you can literally spend a couple of weeks out in these tracks and never drive the same track twice. Now, to find a lot of these tracks, you'll find them just off the main sort of fire trail. So we've actually just sort of followed our noses on this trip and found a bunch of new tracks. So super fun, super cool. You're gonna find a stack of red clay out here, which makes it super slippery and um, obviously really steep hills like this one in front of me. So what I've done, I've dropped my tires down about 15 PSI. Traction is absolutely everything, especially when you're the first vehicle going up. And speaking of which, we get right into it now. As we wind our way through the dense undergrowth, it's not long till the first serious challenge of the day is up front. Well, we have got an A-grade four-wheel drive hill in front of us. We're talking Clay, almost zero traction, huge ruts, off camber sections, and of course, it's super steep. Shauno's going first, I love it when he does that because this really tells me what I can expect. If he struggles up here, the rest of us are gonna struggle. If he walks up, we've got half a chance. So I'm gonna send him up. Rocket, we'll see what he does. Rocket's just smiling, he's not sure either. All right, mate, let's do this. These slippery clay tracks require a fair bit of pace, sticking to your line and not backing out. And Sean has done just that as he monsters his way up this hill. The tongue is out and he's picking his way through the ruts. That's a committing drive, mate. Well done. Get those tyres in the right space. Makes all the difference. Well, it's truth. It's funny, you know. I had a line in my head as I was walking up here that I was driving in my mind. Then I saw Sean I come through and you actually see the size of the vehicle on the track. All of a sudden, the line that I had in my head it's gone right out the window. I've got to rethink it, seeing what he did, so let's watch Rocket and see how he goes. Now, if anyone can commit to a line, it's Rocket. But that 79 is pretty heavy in the rear, and he's going to have to be pretty careful not to bounce the front up too much in the ruts. <laughs> Look at that. He's picked a different line to Sean up the left hand side. It seems to have worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, where's Rocket going? But he just had to straddle that rut so he didn't fall in. The problem if he fell in, that rear would have dropped, tire in the air. He's used to driving on three wheels, but I reckon it's safe to have four. All right, time for the D-Max. Now, I'd like to say I've got a careful plan in place here, <laughs> but honestly, I'm just going with right boot and letting the D-Max do its thing. I'm up. What a ripper. Coming in hot, boys. Up out of the way. Not afraid to steer it. Not afraid to drive that D-Max. Tell you what, doesn't owe him any money, that rig. That was pretty aggressive, but we got there. <laughs> Shane's up next, and I reckon that vehicle is going to be a bit of a dark horse on these tracks. Come on. Come on. Get up there. Look at that. He's up without a problem. That's some smooth driving, mate. Righto, time for Anthony in the Ranger. He's taken a slightly different approach to Shane and <laughs> Spruce, mate. That's a big wheel lift. But he's found a line and bounced his way through. Now, this second stage of the hill climb has huge ruts on the left wheel track. And you can see the marks where other vehicles have scraped the tree. Right, here we go. The hard bit's gonna be this tree up here. I had a quick look at the track. Super steep. 
John's about to cross into the rut, but oh yeah, whoa, yeah, nearly rolls it on the other side. That is a heck of an angle, mate. Come back down, have another go. <laughs> So come over more. You can try. You might have to go back. Yep. Shono's going to need a fair bit of momentum to get across to that rut from the left hand side. He's reversed back down. Fourth throttle, here he comes. Big wheel lift, but as you can see, just not quite enough to get him across and into that secondary rut. Nah. You can always tell how steep an angle is when the vehicle cuts out. Shauno had the key started again to get going. Well, I thought you were going on your side then. No, that's all right. I, I, I thought I could out drive it. So we're about halfway up this hill right here and main problem we've got is nothing more than traction. If this was a rock hill, big wheel lift, but he'd make it up. It's just a traction issue. I don't know how you overcome that, to be honest. Yeah, I, I can't even take, like, can I go straight on that line? I've, I've come uh, over a bit. No, nah, not really. You need to be over that way. You reckon? Yeah, you do. Like, you, you can go straight from there, but you need, to, you need to steer right. But then, I'm going to go another big wheel lift. So I was thinking that it was going to like lift a gnarly one, but I won't go anywhere, because yeah. the bank's here, and I'll come down, and then... That was my thoughts. My hopes as well. But when I saw your rear... And then I had a quick moment, like, actually, I'm probably going to land on the side. <laughs> I was hoping I could just pull you back over here. Yeah. Uh, I think you're going to have to winch it, but you can... Just give us a quick look. Yeah. Sean makes Ooh. a quick assessment <laughs> and has come up with a new plan. Yeah, you can try that. Yeah. Well, Sean has jumped out and had a bit of a look and he's, he's decided rather than stick on the right hand side of the track, which he was going to do because of this tree, he wanted to get away from this tree by staying on that side of the rut. He's now decided to come right up close to the tree, but hopefully lean that way. Is it going to work? My prediction is he won't even get to the tree, <laughs> but we'll see how he goes. Sean's tried to ride that right hand bank and it's a good idea. The problem we've got, of course, just no is there's just no grip. All right, well, that, that <laughs> solves that then, doesn't it? Bit of a shame I can't drive that one. I thought if I do that real big wheel lift, it'll come down, sort of ride itself, and I won't be on my lid. But, um, ah, uh, it wasn't going to do it. And I wasn't going to commit any harder than that. That was 100% commitment. I'd have got nothing left in the tank. We'll just winch, try and get past this bit, and then um, I should be right after that. Just a short winch on the Dominator X and Shauno is now straddling that troublesome rut. And I reckon from here, he'll drive this. Sean's in a far better position now. In fact, he's perfectly straddling that troublesome rut. As predicted, Shauno has made it up that hill, but that is still one committing drive and one heck of a hill. That's a hill, that's a hill. My biggest concern right now, R-O-C-K-E-T, Rocket Man. Okay, Rocket's up, and as you can see, he's adopted his customary position. One hand on the wheel, and one hand bracing himself. We are in for some fireworks here, folks. Alrighty, Rocket's into it, and straight away, he's on three wheels, but hang about, he's made it past that first rut. That is an incredible bit of driving. So close, he's taking a different line and it's working out. He's got to figure out how he gets past this tree. Look at the control Rocket's got with that auto. It's really allowed him to take off gently, but unfortunately, that tree is perfectly positioned in the wrong spot. A bit of repositioning and Rocket is in a far better place. And then, with an expertly smooth drive, he's creamed straight up past those ruts. It looks like he's going to do this without winching. Commit, commit and drive, stomp and steer, whatever you want to call it, that's a heck of a drive. All right. Okay, my turn in the D-Max. The plan here is to try and ride that right-hand bank. As you can see, I've slipped off exactly where Sean I did too. Not enough momentum, didn't commit, and now I've got to try again.
I think it's got to be in one, mate, or... Did the same thing as you, the rear just squatted down into it, lost traction. Yeah, go back a bit. Keep, keep going, keep going. I'll take it back a fair bit. Left, left, okay, okay, straighten it up. On, on that, and just keep it trying to keep it straight. Second attempt, and I'm stoked with how this has gone. I've made it past that first rut. Okay, now I've just got to straddle this middle rut and keep on the power. And I think I've got this. I think I've got it. Good old girl. Yes, old girl. It's all about picking a line. We say it so many times, but that is the truth. It's all about picking the right line. And that right there, that was the line. That always usually does some amazing things. It really does. It surprises the hell out of me. <laughs> Shane's up next and he's got a fantastic start. But he's just been caught out by that darn rut. The key to this on, climb mate. is on, getting on, on millimetre there, perfect. If you don't do that, you're not going to make it. And you can see Sean just lining Shane up for a right, second attempt here. It's quite, it's, you've got to change sort of direction a little bit. But you sort of want to be aiming at the tree until you get past that, so you can get the tire up and over that. Yes, yes, right, 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 right. That tree's caught all of us out, and Shane is no exception. On that line, just give it one go. Righto, Shauno's repositioned Shane, and he's in the perfect spot. Let's see how he goes. Go to one go, all right? <laughs> There's a lot going on. It's not finishing yet too. <laughs> right at the top. Anthony's seen four four-wheel drives attempt this hill now, and I'm sure he's got a line mapped out in his head. Let's see how he goes. Well, he's going hard. Yep, he's going hard. Yeah. Holy heck, Anthony's got three things going on here. He's hanging on by the seat of his pants, Holy. he's picked a good line, and he's got a bucket load of momentum. He's made it up that hill, and made it look easy. <laughs> Holy heck! Who would have thought? Good drive though, good drive. He picked pick the good line, picked the good line. I'll tell you what, that was a pretty hectic moment. I really thought um, at one stage I was going to end up on my lid. But a good little tip for players out here, you don't just need a winch, you need a battery that can handle a winch. And that's why, in sort of here, I'm running the Century Overlander battery. When it comes to choosing the right battery for your four-wheel drive, you want one that can basically do everything. So running accessories like a winch, of course, is gonna drain a lot of power out of your battery. So you don't just need a good starter battery that'll kickstart a four-wheel drive like this. You also need a battery that can be drained and semi-cycled. That's why I've gone for an Aussie-made battery. So every time I go to turn the key, I know Sooty is gonna start. Hey, Sean, you got a copy? Yeah, got you, mate. Hey, buddy, since we've set that camper up, I well, I don't see any need to get back early yourself. No, mate, well, I've only got a rooftop tent. It only takes two seconds anyway to chuck up. What do you think, a night run? Yeah, remember that track we've done it once before, mate? It's down here, it's slippery as heck. Yeah, mate, that'll be unreal. The boys will love that. Hello, right, Rocket, we came. Uh, I remember that one. That was a um, bit of a hard stopper, but yeah, I'm up for it. Right, oh, night run it is. All right, boys, I reckon we flick the old light bars and spotties on and get right into it. Hello boys, we've got a little bit of a hill climb. Um, actually, it's not so little. I think it's quite steep and quite big. Have a look at that, will you? That is long, steep, and that clay is so slippery. We've got nowhere to winch off. Shino, it's all about you, mate. Right. I just do not want to slip off line here. That just goes up. This yeah, is, no, that's definitely a hill climb. That's steep. That's really steep. Oh no. Wow, bugger. Sean O's got this up until that right hand turn. What you can't quite see is just how deep those ruts are. And of course, off camber slippery ruts, that means technical driving. And when it's um, as steep it just as this, sort of went into the bank. no wonder he's looking a bit scared. It's quite slippery out that last little top bit. As always, the cameras just don't do justice to how steep this track really is. Shono's managed to key start old Sooty, which is good news because now Rocket gets to have a go. Oh yeah. Not the place to stall it. <laughs> I'm sweating a lot for a, a time of night when it should be cold. 
is steep and then there's steep. This is steep. Robert's coming up to that right hand turn. He's gonna pick up a wheel here, but if he keeps momentum and doesn't back off, he's got this. That would have felt sketchy, but Rocket's done it. How close is that? That was close. Oh, my Lord. I'm having a heart attack. That means <laughs> I'm up. In my favour, the D-Max has a very low centre of gravity, so I don't think this is going to feel too bad at all. That said, it's still super steep. The rest of the convoy follow suit, and I can speak for everyone in saying we're all glad to be over that sketchy bit of track. After our first taste of Imbul mud for the night, we push on into the forest in search of more slippery goodness. You don't have to go far in Imbul to find mud, and that's exactly what we've got here. Shorto's up first, and with all the grace of a drunken hippo, he's full noise and tackling one of the slipperiest tracks you'll see anywhere. Here we go! Rockets up next, and if nothing else, this is going to look and sound fantastic. Get a load of that 79, will you? Rocket, mate, you are slightly unhinged. That is some crazy driving. Now, if it looks like I'm concentrating here, it's because I am. The previous four-wheel drives have knocked the top off this mud, and what I've got to deal with now is just a slippery slide. Let's see if I can do it. I've got my right boot pinned to the floor and I'm giving the D-Max everything she's got. That's full revs, full noise, and I'm making ground. How good is this? <laughs> push me! Push me! <laughs> Have a look at that, will ya? When I said there was zero traction here, I meant it. I'm going nowhere in a hurry. Right, right. You're driving up. You're driving up. It's official. You're a metre and a half, mate. You're a metre and a half. You guys are good. Everything kept here. You're done good. Maybe I can crawly boy it. Right, Jed. You on behind me? Uh, maybe. Yeah, no, nearly. I reckon if you went back a couple of metres, I right down there. Back down there, get away. You're gonna get away with bakery and, and really have a very hard time. Back to the airport. Go. Every, everybody, no, just not, not stop pushing it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I need to try pressing your order, but work. <laughs> oh, I gained something. Yeah. I gained something. It actually, actually came up a bit. The demon pushed, pushed me up the hill. Yet. I'm You're making ground on. ever so slowly. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm yeah. inching forward. You got to make this. Get out. Come on. I'm moving forward. Yeah, you are. You I'm are. moving forward. Yeah. I'm moving forward. Yeah. I'm moving forward. I'm doing it. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yeah. Oh, hang on! Oh, we talked too soon! Too soon, back up again. I gotta go! We literally just pushed it. Go, 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 go! Whoa! Hold on, oh, man! Oh, oh, where's that? There's the edge of the earth! Don't go down there! Oh, how good was that, mate? That was epic. <laughs> As if you want to be at camp right now when you got all this. Ah, buy a four-wheel drive. It's as much fun as you can have with your clothes on. Give me out. I could Ooh. not believe 
two of us, just push it on the side all of the right, car. That's all Got to go in again. It's four millimeter, millimeter, millimeter. Just over that way. <laughs> Paul send it. He's up. That was the coolest thing I've seen this week. Pretty that cool, was right? cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> Shane's off to the perfect start here. He's got just the right amount of momentum and chances are he's going to do this. He seems to be doing this without any effort at all. There's just that lip at the top that could catch him out. A little bit of wheel spin, but he's over. He's done it. That is a masterful drive. Righto, let's see how Anthony goes. Anthony's off to a cracking start, but that track has just got no traction left. And you can really see it here as he starts to enter the steepest part. Anthony lines up for a second attempt, but as you can see, there's just nothing coming back from that track at all. It's all against him here. Yeah? He's just not doing it. We're going to opt for a very short winch here just to get him over that pinch and then see if he can continue under his own steam. <laughs> It's absolutely essential in places like these and tracks like this that you come out here with recovery gear and winch. Anthony's over that pinch, the winch rope is put away. It's time for him to get back on the loud pedal. And on the loud pedal he got just enough momentum and grip to get him over that lip and make it to the top. That's that hill conquered. We've got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah, right, eh? We'll go past uh, all the old uh, shower pools. Well, no, none of those. You're in your swag oh, like that tonight, mate. Look at that. Look at you. You are that grubby. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> get out of here. I'm out. I'm out. After a big day on the tracks and an even bigger night, we're stoked to jump back in the Forbies and head to base camp, where, of course, we've left the Opus ready set up. From there, it's easy to cook a quick meal, have a couple of beers, and psych ourselves up for tomorrow, where we're going to have another huge day on the tracks of India. It's a picture-perfect morning at Kenilworth Camping. The trucks, however, aren't looking quite so perfect. There's no point in cleaning them, though, because today we're back out on the tracks for more of the same. First up, though, while the trucks don't need jump-starting, we do, and that means a cup of good coffee. We could happily spend a week at this campsite, however, we've got another big day on the tracks and no time to waste. So it's time for us to pack away tents, roll up swags and get back in the four-wheel drives. Well, keep me fighting fit for the track. The beauty with the Kenilworth Imbul region is you're never far from some sort of gnarly track. And within a very short drive, we're pointing the bonnets of the Forbies at another big challenge. Straight off the bat, we've got a short climb to get us up and into the hills, and the camera car is in the lead. The new long camera car is exceptionally heavy with all the gear for three blokes plus camera equipment and hasn't missed a beat yet. In fact, it's handling it like an absolute champ. It's made that thing look like an anthill. Whoa, check out this, uh... It's just a big red clay hill climb thing. Sort of jump into it and see what happens. I reckon in the wet, this will be wild. Have a report back. Bit I can see, I can see the top of your roof, like all the details, the top of your roof. Yeah, I reckon in the wet, that, I'll rephrase that, that would be impossible. All right, Rocket, let's sing, mate. Rocket has a tendency to lift wheels. Let's see how he goes on this short but steep bit of track. Up, 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 up. <laughs> 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 no, that's it. I quit. I'm out of here. That's it. Done. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I want a new job. <laughs> I scared the bejeebies out of me. Time for the D Max. Was there even a hill there? <laughs> no drama at all. Right, no Shane. Show us what you got. Oh, a bit of scrabbling at the top, but he's made it around that tight left-hand corner. Righto, Anthony. Let's go, mate. Campers are going to be built tough to handle this kind of workout, and the Opus is eating it up. Woohoo! 
Mate. Mate. That's not a hill you take a camper trailer up normally. We, we thought we'd come up here, do some R&D. Yeah. We've kept it really simple with the Opus and, and it shows one piece chassis, four mil thick, awesome departure angle, yeah. um, independent core suspension. And the, the trailer body itself is aluminium, so it's kept that weight right down for me. It's really helped me out at that hill. So the end of the story of that is you can just pin it up that hill and not even worry about what's at the back. Just go for it. Worry about your car, the trailer will follow, mate. I like that philosophy. Worry about your four-wheel drive and let the trailer take care of itself. That's it, mate. I like it, I like it. All right, we got a lot of this to go, mate, so if that's anything to go by, I'm not even going to look back in my rear view mirror. You've got this. Looking forward to it, mate. Let's go. Yeah, Graham, get a copy, mate? Sure do, bud. Mate, down in Ammermore now. Pretty cool that all these sort of forests are linked by dirt roads. There's actually um, word of a few hard tracks around here. Take me to them, mate. Take me to them like a, like a, like a bull to a red rag. The hills of Ammermore for us are an unknown quantity, so we've decided to leave the camper trailer under lock and key and continue exploring with just the Forbies. How good is this Imble Kenilworth part of the East Coast? And I'm having an absolute ball out here in what for many people might be considered a work vehicle, and with good reason. The D-Max is a cracking work vehicle, but it does such a good job at being that crossover vehicle. You've seen how good this thing is off-road. In fact, I'm doing it right now. This is a heck of a hill. But what we don't show, of course, is just how capable it is come the weekdays. Take the camping gear out, put your tools in, and away you go to the job site. Of course, it's got massive amount of storage in the back with that canopy. I've got two seats in the back, put your workmates in there. Come Friday night, chuck your camping gear in the back and you've got yourself the best, in my opinion, all round vehicle. Get out on the weekends, enjoy them, and during the week, earn a wage with one vehicle. And that is what is so very important. The D-Max does the best of both. In my humble opinion, does it pretty darn well. And it doesn't take us long to come up with an absolute doozy of a hill. Check this out, will you? Here is a gnarly little hill. It's just all clay, off cambered, big ruts, slippery. The rear locker on, I'm going to be giving it a fair old drive. There's off camber ruts and then there's ruts like this. If Sean leans over any more, he's going to touch his rooftop tent on the ground. Tongues out and wheels in the air. There's a few tense moments going on, but he's made it through. Whoa! <laughs> That's a little drive. Really go easy there. That did not feel comfortable. Sort of tear on three wheels. This is going to be a real well, showstopper. A step up here. Right. We're going to have to do a bit of a commitment here. Right. I can't get. If you've ever wondered what pure fear looks like, <laughs> check out the look on Ash's face. There's got to be a lot of trust between father and son right now. Although, I reckon Ash would jump out if he could. Shit! How are we doing this? Oh. That's a hectic angle, but in true rocket style, he refuses to quit and slowly but surely continues to the top. <laughs> the bloke is a madman. I, I even told Rocket, don't drive this one. I don't think it's for you. I can't believe he did that. That was, he was on the edge of his sidewall. It was about that much in it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sick in the head. Oh, mate. I'm I just sick said, in the head. I said to Ash, I said, we're just going to have to do a commitment run here and just go for it. You're sick. You're not, you're not right in the head. <laughs> Oh, oh Lord. While the 79 and Sooty might have made that look pretty darn gnarly, I reckon I've got this in the bag. A little D Max the weapon! Look at her. She loves this stuff, dude. That's a really bad angle. That's a really bad angle. He just loves it. <laughs> loves it. I just love the fact that even when you're going through that bit where it was really tippy, it just. It just stayed true. It stayed close to the ground. That's low center gravity, mate. Working to your advantage. I'm a convert, mate. I'm a convert. That was cool. That was cool. I might have to just get out down to a quiet moment alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, onwards and upwards. Shane's proved himself in the past, and I don't think this will be any exception. He's picked his line perfectly, and as I suggested, he's made it up unscathed. Anthony's taken the perfect line up here, and as you can see, 
despite that angle, he's made it look easy as well. Time to push on. From here, we're basically following our noses to a fire tower the locals tell us has a heap of steep tracks radiating off the base. Let's see what we can find, eh? We're talking some big ruts, bumps, and these little breakaways here that I'm going up now, these little steep sections, when you drop over them and then back into it again, it really does work out your suspension. I've got to pick a line up here. It's climbs like this when you're really getting into it like I'm doing now, just giving it a bit of, like that. Whoa! <laughs> it really does knock your suspension around. Not only your suspension, but pretty much your drive line, everything underneath the vehicle. Copy, Shane? Got a copy, Graham. Mate, that is a hill of consequence. Get into it, bud. All right, on my way up. Oh, she's coming up, mate. What's your call on the impact, pardon the pun, tracks like this have on your suspension and wheel alignment? Oh, mate, if you're out on the weekend doing these sort of tracks, you definitely want to get it done after it just to make sure you haven't knocked your wheel alignment out. So you suggest, A, checking your suspension very often, and B, not just checking your uh, wheel alignment after it new set of tyres, but pretty much after every weekend out. Oh mate, it would be recommended, especially if you want to keep some life into your tyres. And what's the importance of a uh, wheel alignment, mate? Like, just tell us, what exactly does a wheel alignment do? Mate, it's all about the, the footprint when you're driving, you know? It gets you the traction on or off-road. Also it keeps it so you get some life out of your tyres and, you know, you're not forking out a thousand bucks every couple of months. So I guess what you're saying is wheel alignment is a cheap way of extending the life of your tyres, which are an expensive item. Yeah, definitely, mate. All right, mate, well, we're at the top of the hill, and what goes up must come down. I think we take a left up here, bud. Let's get into it. It's not long till we found what we've been looking for, and this one is an absolute doozy. Mate, I, I don't know. I, honestly, it, it's not often I say I'm sitting on the fence on this one. I, I don't I don't like your chances. <laughs> I don't either, um, but I want to give it a go sort of thing. I, I, yep. I build, like, you know I'm an optimistic fool. You are, I, you're I, a very optimistic fool, Robert. I think I'll fucking make it, yep. and, um, well, it's funny because I looked down from the top of the hill and was like, oh, no way I'll make that. When I look at the we bottom, I'm like, yeah. you know what, I can, I can sort of do that if I get a few good things on my If, if a way. lot of things line up, yeah, yeah right. you'll do it. But right. you know what I'll do? I'm going to get ready for the worst case scenario. I'm going to get all the winch and recovery no, gear ready. I, I, and... I've, I've looked at it. I reckon I winch three times. There's three possible winch points. If I okay. make the first one, you throw that out the window look and probably make it. All right, well, let's see if you can get up here a bit. Yeah, but let's uh, let's grab some recovery gear out. the hardest bit right at the start, I reckon. No, right up the top. There's a pinch up there. It goes like that, it inverts. <laughs> You've got to drive under a cave. All right, all right. I'm going to get a winch. Okay. So on a hill climb like this, where it's it's inevitable that I'll probably winch, but I want to make sure that I'm absolutely ready. So I've got my control. I'm making sure everything's going really well. It is. It's all working. Graham's got a tree trunk protector. He's also got a blanket. He's going to go up the hill where I probably need to winch. I don't go anywhere without my Hercules recovery kit and Dominator X winch. And the combination of both of those gives me the confidence to drive hills like this. So wish me a bit of luck. I don't like my chances. Oh, here we come. Right, oh, mate. Gently, gently. That's my advice. It's obvious this track hasn't been driven in a very yeah, long good start, time. Good start. Good start. So it's a complete unknown to us. But one thing we all agree on: it's steep. Damn steep. That's just this. That's no traction in that. Ah, but you picked it really well. You got it stuck exactly where you thought you were going to. Oh, no. He's out. You're out. Let's find my If that was speed dating, that would have been the quickest date ever. <laughs> another uh, another five foot, mate. Another five foot. Sean has only made it a few truck lengths into this track and we're already on the winch. We've got a long way to go. Getting past this section and then getting back under his own steam. It's funny when you get behind the wheel, you're halfway up, you think, you're halfway up, shut up. Don't, don't ruin my confidence. <laughs> You think this hill, it's a lot bigger than, oh, why am I an ambitious forward roll? I could have just pussied out. It would have been so easy. Jono's underway again and he's making good ground until he comes up upon a tree root which completely holds his progress. That's that. Looks like we're jumping back on the winch. That's it, you're stuck in a big tree root just here. You know that angle's steep when Shauno keeps conking out and he's continually restarting the vehicle. This could be a real problem for Shauno. He's concerned about rolling backwards, and rightly so. This is so vertical. Like, I'm not even sitting back in my seat. I'm, oh, I wish you could see just how vertical this is. Look at the trees. They're not lying. If you can see the trees. I can't, look at my bum's not on the seat. This hill's turned out to be a lot more than we bargained for. And as you can see, everyone's pitching in to get Shauno safely to the top. That's it, it's all winch, mate. You hung up on your uh, on your arms. Right about now, Shauno's starting to question whether this was a good idea or not. Probably a bit late for that, a bit late. A bit late in the whole piece of driving a track when you're halfway, and you don't want to, huh? You're still not halfway. 
Stop oh, teasing. <laughs> it's workplace bullying. Jono's having another crack while I run the winch cable up in front for him, and it's from this angle that you can really appreciate just how steep that track is. No option here but, of course, to get back on the winch. We've run a fair bit of cable out here because I think it's best we just get Shauna as high as we possibly can. There's an immense amount of pressure on that winch rope right there and Shauna is understandably looking pretty darn tense. Just dragging the whole chassis. Uh, the problem Shauna's got down there is he's not only diffed out, he's chassis out, he's completely got all four wheels spinning on that ridge. So we're going to try and lift this recovery point up high so it lifts the truck up instead of winching him down into the ground, which is what we're currently doing. So take up tension to hold it up there, then we'll see how we go. Small adjustments to anchor points can make such a big difference. By raising our anchor point here, we've been able to pull Shino up and out of those ruts, which has meant he can keep winching safely. What's going on here is this hill hasn't been driven in a very long time and the weathering process has meant that the rain has washed a lot of this stuff back into the track causing it to be extraordinarily slippery. Lucky for us there's an abundance of quality trees all along this track which means we've got no shortage of anchor points. Shono's had another crack at driving but unfortunately has literally only got a couple of metres. This hill, she's the hill that keeps on giving. To make matters worse, Sooty's got a few technical problems that certainly aren't helping. Ah, oh, this is super steep. You're not wrong, mate. I don't envy you in the driver's seat. It's got an idle problem too. It's just not idling very nice on that. It might be a fuel pickup problem, or it's just an issue with the idle. Maybe it's just down too low, but it's making this hard hill extremely scary. Even just stopping on this hill is proving to be extremely difficult. To slide backwards would mean, well, let's not even think about that. There's a lot that could go wrong here. Bob, you'll stay on the heaps, you? I just think I might be able to drive it from here. Settle down, man. <laughs> well, I just drove that then a little bit. Sean's keen to have a drive here, but we're all against it. It's just too darn risky. You're not going to drive up this 100%. So you can try and drive up to here if you want. Oi, right, I'm going to ride the clutch. Just unhook me. This is a bold and risky plan, but Sean's adamant that he wants to have it. All right. Let's see how this pans out. Even a fraction of an inch. I know this, I'm out. I'm just gonna take Sleep the key. Pin <laughs> gear. <laughs> Alright, who's next? Well, it turns out this big wet patch right here, I had a water bottle in the car, <laughs> filthy accident. Well, mate, I, I don't think anyone wants to ever go like that. Prop yourself up over here. No, <laughs> look, it's, it's not that bad. It's um, If you're in a comp truck with 38 yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that, you yeah, probably yeah. Might... Light centre of gravity, 400 yeah. horsepower, that you, sort of stuff. You don't have to winch once or twice then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a proper truck. That's oh, next What killed me though is that problem with either the pickup with the fuel yeah. Yeah. or there's a vacuum issue mm -hmm. or there's. There's, there's a few issues, including a bloody loose up on the wheel. Well, the other thing we noticed, which you probably didn't, is that track hasn't been driven in a very yeah, long time. Tell that now, yeah, now yeah. I've got my wheel tracks on it. Yeah, no, nah, that hasn't been driven in a very, very long time. Well, that will probably go down as one of the toughest tracks I've ever driven, and just at least for the steepness of it, it's, yeah, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really yeah, yeah. out of me. I want to know, though, put in the comments below if you've actually driven this track, because I want to know what the secret is, how you drove, what you drove, not if your mate's uncle drove it or you saw a photo of someone <laughs> once in 1933 that drove it in a Model T or something. They wouldn't have. <laughs> no, no, we wouldn't have. They wouldn't but have. I want to know, I want to know, so put it in the comments below. And speaking of which, look, what's the hardest track you've ever driven that you shouldn't have? Because <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you had no place being on that hill right then. I'm going so, to go through every single one of these comments. Yeah, we do. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to put a list of ones I'm going to try later. Let us know. Hardest track you should never have driven. You probably didn't drive it, but mate, we've got to get cracking on. It's nearly dark. Yeah. Well, we've got to turn you around first, so let's right, do that, and then we'll right, get going. We're going to do that. All right. All right. Another big day on the tracks draws to a close, but for us, we've still got one more night out bush, so we push on back to base camp. Well, boys, that's uh, some of the most fun I've had off-road for a long time. Absolute crack of a 
Absolutely crack on the trip. Rocket, um, mate, that, that noisy old V8 engine, mate. I'm going to listen to that in my sleep for a long time. I hope that doesn't sound weird. No, I tell you what, you know, the noise this thing makes, you know, it puts me to sleep each night in the dreams. Far out. I tell you what, Shane, you ate that track up. Mate, really like this style of four-wheel driving. It was, a, it was a dark sheep of the crew, really. But, um, yeah, mate, did really well. Mate was extremely happy. Anthony, mate, you've done extremely well, bud. Towing a trailer and, um, and and setting up a base camp for us so we can just get back straight in. Hope you're cooking tonight, bud, because it's um, Chef's night off. Yeah, mate, I've got something in store for you. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I thought I could slip that through, mate, and no one would really pick up on it. <laughs> All right, well, camp's not too far, boys, so we'll just slip down this road here, and um, I'm looking forward to it. Cracking a cold one, maybe. How good is having a setup base camp? The Opus Camper, well, it's one of the best I've ever seen. And the fact that it all goes up at the push of a button, that's my kind of camper trailer. Folks, honestly, Amelmore, uh, Kenilworth, all these areas out through this way, just push a little bit further out past the glass house, get out into the rainforesty areas out here, you know, the time of your life. These guys having a blast, and that's the beauty of setting up a base camp. We're here tonight, we've got snaggers on, we've How got plenty good. of beers. How good. It really is good, folks. We'll catch you. <laughs> Probably not here, we're going to move on from here. Oh, I don't know where we go next. You're, you're excited, what? We go to the Cape next. Go to Cape York. Yeah. We're on the way north, so may as well. So cool, <laughs> so cool. We're on the way north, folks. We might catch up Cape York if you're up there for holidays. If not, we'll catch you next time. On full drive action, we sure will. Look, we are now, as you all know, this is old news now, on YouTube, free. Don't have to pay a cent. So please subscribe, like it, and leave a comment. Leave a comment. I love going through the comments and having yep. a bit of a read. We, put, we, we answer them. Yeah, exactly. So put a comment in there, and we will catch you next time. Cheers. I'm going to get some sausages. Oh, they're mine, they're get mine. them all, that's for sure. Coming up, we've got my favourite part of any four-wheel drive action episode. That's right, our funny side with the four-wheel drive action outtakes. But for now, let's have a look at some of the gear we use to make this adventure possible. Mate, Kenilworth, Imbal region, how good is it? Mate, it's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, one of the real hidden gems of South East Queensland. Yep. Tough tracks, yep. insane camping, and it yep. doesn't get the crowds at like Glasshouse and DI and all that sort of gap. And Glasshouse is just, it's just over Not there. far. You can nearly go, you can go to the Glasshouse via dirt tracks, in fact. So this is the problem with us, we get so carried away with four wheel driving, we don't actually do what we're here to do, which is to let you folks know about some of the bits and pieces we used on this specific trip that really helped us out. Do you wanna go first? Yeah, sure, mate. Look, one that stands out for me, of course, on that night drive. These bad boys, they really helped us out. Now, I'm running a set of six and a half inch Explorer LED lights by Livid. Now, these things are insane. Super good quality, a really bright white light that actually makes driving on highways and stuff a hell of a lot easier, dirt roads, and a lot safer too. But out on the tracks, these things performed. So I've got the best combination, I reckon. I've got six and a half inch lights and also a 22 inch night armor light bar. Yep, yep. So that's out of the same sort of stable as um, Livid. Yeah. And, um, Fantastic combination. I see you're also running the old 22 inch. Yep, mate, I had to be careful being behind people. I'm gonna blind rocket if I put that on, <laughs> which is why I was glad you were at the front because they really are that damn bright. These little bad boys. No, Where'd no. we be without a quality set of handhelds, mate? Out yep. on the tracks for spotting. Even just finding out how far ahead you are if you've gone to the pub or not. I mean, it's actually no matter where. Folks, if you are gonna get in the bush, I reckon just from a safety perspective, have one of these with you. Grab yourself a set of quality handheld radios. And for yeah. me, the unit and set, absolutely fantastic. They make a quality radio. I've dropped this, Jim, I fell in the mud, and just dropped on the ground, a little driven over them. They just keep on going. They, the charge lasts forever. I've not charged this the whole trip. Well, I've still got all the battery. The whole battery's still on there. It's still ready to go. Five water. It is a five water, this one here. Uh, we've also got some two waters that the camera crew use occasionally. In fact, I'm looking at the camera crew right now. They've got one around their neck. So grab yourself a unit and get out into the bush. One thing, I suppose, that probably doesn't get a big mention, but it's a very, very important part of setting your four-wheel drive up for the bush. And that is um, my batteries. Right. Now, I'm running the Sanctuary 4x4 Overlander batteries. Now, what I like about those is that they're a fair income start battery, as in they've got a lot of cold cranking amps, so they can kick a, a big four-wheel drive out in the guts easily every morning, but also that they can be somewhat semi-discharged. So they've got the same principles of like... A deep cycle-ish. Exactly yep. right. So when they're using things like your winch, yep, yep, where, yep. where you're discharging your battery time and time again, your driving lights when doing those night runs, yep, yep. a lot of batteries don't like that. No, These cool. ones, they, they love it. They That's love brilliant. It. So it's actually four-wheel drive specific. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I could have said that in like two seconds. You could have done. Yeah, exactly I like the way right. you described it though. And last but not least, when it comes to the end of the day, one of my favourite parts, I love the wheeling, I really do. Pulling into camp at the end of the day and cracking a cold beer. Doesn't get much better than that. Doesn't mate. get much better than that. And you've got to be comfortable. I've always said that. And since I've adjusted my setup a little bit, yeah, I noticed. Camping for me has just become the bomb at the moment. So what I'm running at the moment is the King Stretcher. I've got an Escape single swag set up on top of that. Yep. Super cool. And of course, I put that under the awning. So we got quite a heavy dew last night. I wake up bone dry this morning. Yep, yep. It was absolutely fantastic. We're going the life of luxury, mate. You have. 
I've got the old uh, Tura rooftop tent, and I've got to say, rooftop tents, I just find that the difference in height I get, yeah. sort of, the snoring sort of goes under that, so <laughs> I can get a good noise. Is that true or not? It's not true. I've actually got you. <laughs> that, that helps. Out. The good news is, if I'm snoring heaps, yeah. it's because I'm super comfortable. <laughs> so I tell you what, that swag has been fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Look, I want to say a big thank you for watching this episode. I hope you learned a little bit and got some inspiration to get out there and hit these tracks yourself. So make sure you're always subscribed to the Ford Action channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss a second of the action. Where are we going next? To the pub, mate, because I've oh. got a it's Kenilworth Pub. They do a great wine deck over there. And look at this weather. Let's go and sit out in the beer garden. Done. Last one there's Done. a rotten egg. Done. <laughs> I, I feel the sickness. <laughs> now, <laughs> now the sickness. <laughs> <laughs>